that's it. All right. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Black Altos Podcast. I'm your host. Oh, wait. There was something I need to do. Hold on. Just need to make sure my dad's mic is good. Can you talk to your mic? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, something. That's not right. Yeah. What is he plugged into? Yeah, I need to four. Hold on. Keep talking. No, Karen, you don't need to help. Ten, nine. I can hear now. Yeah, hear myself. Yeah. All right, I hear you too. Um, let me check the recording volume. Uh, how was your day today? The day was excellent, man. I woke up, went back to sleep, woke up, took a shower, got out the crib. All right. And how was, your, how was your day today? It was good. Make sure you raise your mic a little bit so that it's like right where you're talking to the, the yeah. bottom of it. Yeah, move this this piece right here, Myra. You can just move oh, right here. Yeah. Not yeah, there you go. Yeah, you the actual arm. There you okay. go. Okay, how's that? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. All right. All good. right. All right. All right. Get here we coffee. go. Yeah, I'm I'm short, so that's why I was low. All right, here we go. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Blackout Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Rod, joined as always by my co-host, Karen. And we're live doing our podcast. You can find us on crowdcast.io. Uh, it's in the show notes already. The link is in the show notes. Somebody wrote in yesterday asking, how do I get, watch y'all live on a podcast? And I said, oh, I'll add it to the show notes. Well, guess what, y'all? We had already put it in the show notes because that's how long we've been doing this thing. We we anticipated your needs. So uh, anytime you have a question, look in the show notes first, and then uh, you might find it's already there. Most um, of the time it is. Today is a special day uh, because it is the annual tradition on the show. Mother's Day, we have my mom on, and Father's Day, we have my dad on. What's going on, Dad? Hey, what's up, people? How you doing, son? Good. Glad Karen, you can make it. My people. How, right. How's your Father's Day going so far? Hey, it's wonderful, man. Got up, did a little stuff around the house, you know, and got out. I even took a shower. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I got wished a happy Father's Day yesterday. You um, did. It ooh. was hilarious. Coming from this restaurant, we went out. To oh, this wow. restaurant in the middle of the day. Um, it was nice. Uh, we what me and Karen do is we save restaurants on Instagram, mm-hmm. and we have like a list called yes. like food goals, and mm-hmm. we share the list. And you know, whenever we have some downtime, we'll just pick one of the restaurants and just go out there and check them out. Word. So we went to this place called Two Hundred Four North. It's on uh, I think North Tron or something mm-hmm. downtown. Mm-hmm. Pretty pretty fancy. Kind of like expensive food place, but not so fancy. You gotta like dress up or anything, right? Oh yeah. Uh, but we didn't know what the prices were. We just was like, whatever we spending, we spending today, you know. Oh, wow. Okay. But then on the way back, this woman in the street was just like, "Happy Father's Day," and I, you know, I don't even correct people. I just keep walking like, "All right, have a good one." Then she was I like, "You got any change you can spare?" I was like, "Oh, uh-huh. it's a setup." Yeah. yeah. It was a trick. You don't care about if I'm a father or not. You look like my you look like my dad. You look like my baby daddy. <laughs> he was trying to get get this bread. I don't blame her though. Because they was out. Everybody was out. He was working. It was. Yeah. yeah. I was like, because I already I was you know I don't take the time to correct people. Yeah. It's it's whatever it is. Carlos tagged me in a Father's Day post on Facebook today. I was, oh, guess wow. he forgot. Oh. <laughs> you say he's trying to sit, throw a hint. Y'all need to get busy over there. <laughs> I think it's like that. I think it's like uh, the term. I think it's like the term MILF in, in, yeah, in right. society yeah, where it's exactly. just really it just means a woman is a certain age and you right. still will have sex with That's her. Right. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. mean she's actually a mom. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. No, she ain't got to be a mom. Yeah. Um, as always, you can leave if you have questions or things you want to uh, ask my dad, you can uh, do so in the chat by. Um, uh, one of the one of the options you have in the chat is making your your st- thing into a question, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll try to monitor that and 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 ask uh, questions from the audience. Uh, of course, uh, we still got a show plan, so we're gonna talk about some topics and all that stuff as well. Um, yes. Uh, the official weapon of the show is the taser, an unofficial sport, bullet ball, a bullet ball extreme, extreme. Oh, um, go ahead, Karen. Okay, I wanted to uh, uh, let everybody know uh, we actually went to go see Earthquake, and that was part of uh, Roger's daddy's uh, Father's Day gift. We had a ball. I haven't excellent. I have not laughed that 
worked hard, like Same. live in a concert in years. Like yeah. I'm talking about, like it got to be decades since I've actually. It yeah. was like I literally, and I don't sweat. I literally broke out in a sweat. I had a fall from the first comedian to the last one. It was so much fun. It was yeah. excellent. Yes, it was. Thank you so much for that treat. I was surprised. I complained a little bit because you know how I am. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of the surprise. I'm like, you should have told me. And I was looking like, but it would not be a surprise, old man. I got to rearrange my day. I got to brush my teeth at a different time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, me, me and your wife, you know, the women, we had kind of prepared for it and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. That's right. So uh, we got, you know, got the tickets. As soon as I seen that little email, it was like earthquake. I was like, oh, bitch, I'm going. Bye, right. bye, bye. Yeah. Yep, yep. That's one thing. I'm not trying to be funny. That's one thing I like about getting old. And uh, shout out to COVID because COVID allowed me to say some of my coins up. Yep. So um, I I actually got, it's a running joke. I call it Rod's money, even though it's our money. But I just feel better when I call it Rod's money. So I don't feel like it's coming out of my pocket, even though it's coming out of both <laughs> our accounts. So I love spending Rod's money on shit like this. I had a ball. Yeah. yeah um, it was an older crowd too, <laughs> which, uh, you know, I recommend if going to see Earthquake. Because first of all, old niggas don't shoot each other. So... <laughs> mm. You don't have to worry about no no violence popping off just yeah. in case. Um, but then the, like people was on time. Mm -hmm. They was oh, they was there early. Order, they was orderly. Um, they were a great crowd, you know. Um, you know, when we first came in, I heard heard one dude <laughs> talking about uh how he was like, you know, I I I didn't watch the special or whatever, but you know, he's a little vulgar. He said the N-word a lot. I was like, Oh, do these people know who they about to go see? That's what I, I said. Right. I was about to say, because you, you're going to get a lot of nigga. He was talking about his church stuff. You know, I went to church and the Lord. And he was sitting on the front front row was right that, next to the stage. Was that right. the person behind me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He, was it up. he was cracking yes. up. You know, and said, and uh, yeah. the, uh, what he was, was the, perpetrating. The middle comedian looked at him. He said, I didn't know if you was going to like me or not. Right. So you just looked at me with right. that surface the whole time. Yeah, he yeah. cracked up. I think also, like, I, I think black people who are openly afraid of the n-word is really more like uh being afraid of trying crack i really think i don't think it's as offensive as they say it is i think they need to believe that yeah so they won't say it because everybody i know that's been my friend who told me they don't say it once they hang out with me and they see i don't i don't care they start saying it more than i do i'm right. like damn what, what happened to all that you used to be like, I'm a negus. Yeah, I'm a, didn't Justin I'm, used to be like that? Now. Justin was like that. Yeah. Vic was like that. A bunch of people was like that. I, I, so it's just funny that he made that loud proclamation before the show, and he was laughing the hardest of anybody. Yeah, in there. Let me know. And, and he was laughing hard at the other dudes, and they were saying it a lot, too. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know why. You know, I get it, but it's just funny to see. I, it was funny because I said, if he's telling the truth, he's gonna hate this show. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. that's what I said. Because I seen Earthquake stand up, and he say the nigga, he say nigga a lot. Yes, so if, if that dude is really yeah. like anti N word, yeah, bro, right. why you just wasted all your money? Yes. But it, initially, he had his arm. The dude had his arms folded, like he was saying, "Yeah, I'm gonna see what this mm -hmm. gonna be about." But before it was over, he was guffawing and throwing his hands up like everybody else. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, like Roger said, I do like the older crowd. Uh, I know everybody in there was like, it was one couple in there was they were married like 45 years. <laughs> I was like, how old young were y'all when y'all got right? married? And um, I actually had a, uh, I was thinking about when old people doing things old people. We got there, y'all, and the doors didn't open up till 6. We got there about, what, 5.30? Mm -hmm. And some of them was like, yeah, we've been, we been here before 5. I was like, y'all niggas wasn't playing. I know, right? <laughs> y'all was I know, like, right? I'm going to be the first in the door. Yeah, I like I that about old people. They were like, get in, get out. I've never been that early to the comedy zone. I yeah. I normally get there like a few minutes before the doors open. I mean, for the you know the show starts. So yeah. that was my first time being there in the line outside. Yeah, hey, that's a question. Excuse mm -hmm. me. <clears throat> did um did you guys ask for front row seats or no? No, nah, just... I think they just seat you oh, wherever. I thought they said it's right. Oh, it's right and Carol, the black guy. Who <laughs> I don't think. No. Oh my God, this is Daddy. We <laughs> gotta know. sit them up front. No, when you when you uh, it might be different uh per show, but I know particularly at at this particular comedy zone, 
they have two sets of tickets. They have the regular general admission. Mm -hmm. Then they have the ones where you pay just a little upcharge. It's not that much higher. Just a little upcharge to be able to sit closer. I'm short. I hate looking over people. This yeah, is just me personally. Also, I guess Karen yeah. did pay extra. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hate looking over people's heads. I wonder why and them all tickets that, were so expensive. All that other bullshit. Because yeah. I'm like, no, I want to be able to see. We're going to have to do an audit, Rod, to see yeah. what's going on. What's man. going on? Yeah, what's I, going I didn't. <laughs> the thing for me is I don't really want to sit in the front row of a comedy show. Like, that's not a thing for it, me at all, just because you never know which comedians are going to try to do say, some crowd work. Say, and look shit. at this motherfucker right here. And a lot of them. You now, married? <laughs> a lot of them on TikTok, they do crowd work on purpose to go viral because it's a way to share your work without yeah. sharing, burning your actual material. Yeah. So I, you know, if I had my druthers, I'd prefer not to sit there because I don't want to be no extra material for this nigga. And like he didn't write no like, jokes. Like he hit that girl up front by being single. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You might yeah. that might be you. Now I'm an introvert, but I know Karen, she probably would like to be part of the show and your stuff. Mom, and your mom too. Yell at the comedian and all that shit. Yeah. And, and so I don't want to yell at a woman. Uh that. that's a lot, Karen. We went to see Super Video <laughs> Brothers and you was yelling. Every time we go see comedians, you be yelling. <laughs> Yeah. You, you want to be part of the show. It's an introvert thing. It's an extrovert thing. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. But I I don't want to be part of the show. That's my nightmare. So it's just kind of well, like, it's... I hope this nigga got some jokes and don't be trying to say no wild shit to me so he can try to get go viral. Hey, listen, your mom, when the dude was asking about how long people been married, I saw a hand go up. I said, who been married long? I was like, put, right. your, put your head down. I ain't right. trying to be on TV. <laughs> put your head down. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, I don't want them interviewing me. These people don't play, man. They'll come back at you. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> say I don't. Yeah. And the thing about it, you aren't. Uh, it just means close. It don't mean front row. I don't know why they set us up there. Yeah, but that's it just fine. Means a little closer. But of course, they sit you up in the front row because that's the place most people don't want to sit. Oh, so if yeah. you don't say anything, they're gonna oh, take you to yeah. the front. Yeah. I already, I saw they took a lot of people to the front that was in there at the same time as us, it's and they got up and moved to that back circle. It's like ah. No, no. Yeah, I was like, man, they smart. That's what I was gonna do. Especially but... with earthquake, he'll get you, man. Yeah, but he was great, man. He was, uh, he was like, he wasn't roasting people. He had a little thing back and forth with this woman, but it was like a funny, like yeah. it yeah. wasn't like, and she was one of them people that wanted to be involved mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Um, but he used it as a teachable moment too. Yeah, you know? he did. He talked about how people need to treat each other. And, our brothers need to be more considerate and loving and yeah you know, he did all that so yeah it was it was dope um so i'm glad you had a good time uh we did too yeah i appreciate know? it love you both happy father's day thank you very much I we ain't getting nothing for you this morning that's so. great that's I'm, great I'm, yeah. I'm, i want no surprise i want I, earthquake i'm about, about to say hey, Roger. Nigga, how you doing? <laughs> that's that man. we're sitting on the front row right now <laughs> take them sunglasses off why your eyes so red <laughs> you punk bitch yeah roger roger got the bill i think i blew the budget so <laughs> Hey, we good right here. Yeah, because that that that's the thing when you when you let the woman do it, she be like, "Look, I'm gonna do nice stuff." Shit, the men don't even be thinking about. It was like, "I just do the bare minimum." She be like, "Why? Why are we gonna do the bare minimum? Like, let's <laughs> let's up it up a little bit." Yeah. Hey, I appreciate it. It was all wonderful and lovely. I disagree <clears throat> with that. By the way, I do nice stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I did say all men. Look at your mm -hmm. BSCT. Yeah, you know like, I flush the toilet. That's nice. All right. <laughs> And she was definitely talking about me just now because she said Roderick. She didn't say all men at first. She started with, this is why I do this and I do that. So, uh, shots fired. No um, let me ask you about some general topics, though, before we get into the show. What did you think about the NBA Finals and the, I guess the NBA playoffs in general? I, I, expect, I, I expected Denver to be undefeated uh, in the finals, you know, mm -hmm. in the very finals. Um, I was surprised Miami won a game. Yeah. Uh, they just didn't match up well, you know. Uh, the Lakers, anytime they lose, I'm happy, you know. <laughs> like that, you know. So, although I love LeBron, I like to see the Lakers lose. Uh, Boston was my team. Boston and Golden State were my teams this year, but you know they kind of ran out of steam. Man, Boston yeah. ran out of steam. They're talking about breaking up the team, getting rid of some key parts, you know, I think that time of year. I think Boston and Golden State are in opposite positions where, like, Boston better bring Jalen Brown back just because you don't find niggas like You that. don't find them, man. Like, yeah. even if your goal, like, your ultimate goal getting rid of Jalen Brown would be to find somebody similarly talented to Jalen Brown that doesn't turn it over late in the game. Yeah. 
And I just rather work on him not turning the ball that's right, over. That's right. We but can improve that. Yeah, he made yeah. some stupid passes there. I was like, man, did you get paid, brother? Or what? Yeah, I, I I don't think I've ever seen a legitimate <laughs> NBA star that couldn't go left. That's right. Yeah. Like that's something you use to shut people down to like the YMCA. That's like, right, oh, he yeah. can't go left. We just that's right, to the yeah. So like, all off season, nigga, you left. You yeah. no yeah. other direction. Get you, this shit. You together. in the NBA, bro. What how is that know, uh, how's that possible two years in yeah, a row? I know. But uh, I still would. I still think you got to keep them. I yeah. know the money is gonna be too super huge. Yeah. But once again, it's it's this problem of trying to replace somebody, uh, with 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 with, with, with a what? better version of them with that what? that yeah. when they already a unicorn. That's right. Yeah. And then Golden State got the opposite problem. I think Draymond got it. Draymond. Go. How about this? Draymond's last name is Green. Mm-hmm. Other dude's last name is Brown. We could just change them two colors around, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't gonna work. Well, the 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 dude he punched is Jordan Poole. Yeah, man. And Jordan Poole got his money, so I think that's that's the end of the argument. Yeah. Like, big bank take little bank when it comes to fights on the team. That's like, right. so I th- I think Draymond's gone. I think that's why the GM went ahead yeah. and resigned. He yeah. did. He brought all those guys together. He don't want to be the one. That's right. To break it apart and uh and i i think the fact that after the season the first thing all the, the coach draymond everybody got asked about was draymond punching that dude yeah, in the chemistry man yeah because <laughs> it man. does not go away yeah. and it did no, matter it people can't people act like it don't matter like i'm you, telling you one thing you come in and smack a co-worker don't think the atmosphere in your like office say. room ain't about to change you, right you punch, you punch your wife every night you know she got a pistol up and a pillow wait on your ass to jack right up, you know and like who is the person like i think whenever people think about that stuff and they take the slapper side it's because they think they're the slapper yeah nobody uh, ever thinks what you, what it's gonna be like to get slapped end, yeah. how many of y'all got got enough jesus in you to turn the other cheek to that shit? Yeah, i, I know, don't right? I know, right? <laughs> right and 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 the thing is mm. him doing that literally could have caused all that brawl like right. you know what i'm saying That's because right. it's one of those things where a if he would have retaliated and and like brawl or either what happened if he got you know because well, you it's have hard work. to retaliate when you get knocked out because it's a sucker punch right Right, that's that's the that's the I mean, thing. You didn't always even... a get back move, right? Yeah, there. the next day could have caught him in the caught him slipping in the parking yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, and you and some other people beat him up. But are they wrong? Cause you sucker punch me. Yeah, that that chemistry is so delicate in any environment. You know, work, home, mm-hmm. so delicate, man. So you do something like punch somebody or create a a situation like that, and although, and then that you know that they got close, but you could just tell at the end that they just like. They mm-hmm. look like they were just going through the motions. Yeah, yeah. it got bad because they yeah. lost to LA. That's right. And it it wasn't particularly competitive. No. Okay. Um, it really got down to just like if Steph can't score 50 right. or 60 tonight, That's we're right. just gonna lose. Yeah. And then with Joker and them, they so young. I don't see why they shouldn't be the favorite to win the next three, four, five I championships. Agree. I agree. Like I that agree. dude is a beast. He like, is, man. I, I don't I don't know that people came into the playoffs having watched them, but you know, I got a league pass. So you, yeah. and then I was in New York for four months. So it was like every night I'll just come home, watch NBA right. League Pass and 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 you know, go to sleep. Yeah. And I watched a lot of them Denver games. And I was like, man, this dude is a, is a awesome, problem. Man. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> it just don't look like a highlight. It doesn't look well, he's not very athletic. He's right. not gonna jump up and run and they beat you down the floor. He just runs down there, finds a spot. If you let him stand out there at the three, he'll kill you. Mm-hmm. If you let him get inside the paint, he'll kill you. If he gets close to the hole, he'll kill you. So yeah. it's just hard to defend somebody like that. And now teams are saying, well, you know, next year uh, they're not planning to have what. What we're going to do about Joker? You know, what right? We're do about exactly. Him? Yeah. And if, and I saw everybody try game plans at him. Like the whole playoffs, every team tried something different. That's right. Yeah. Uh, the Heat did that zone. He yeah. broke that shit apart. Yeah. <laughs> you shoot. You can pass the ball. He's a yeah. threat, man. Everywhere right. you look. Minnesota tried to like the deep, the double team on them. You know they put yeah. they put Gobert, who's like yeah. one of the defense players of the year, on yeah. them. That shit didn't matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lakers had Anthony Davis on yeah. them. They tried to do that thing where they uh, double teamed off of him and let Aaron Gordon beat them. Yeah, they, he did. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> just. 
man, it, it was a, it was just yeah. that dude is a problem. He he'd be a beast in any era of the NBA. That's I think true. so. I agree. I, I enjoy watching him because it's one of those things where it's almost he's out there almost effortlessly. He barely this he like true, jumped right? two inches off yeah. the ground. Like you don't know, like it's not mm-hmm. a lot of yep. af- quote unquote athleticism as far as like you know the, the sparkly shit. But yeah. it's like he will whoop your ass. That's right, he will. Mary has a question. Uh, hey, question. Mary. Question. Hey, for, question for Roz Dad uh, and Mister Mar. Mister Mar, would you like Zion Williamson on the Hornets? Happy Father's Day. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, you know, I think he's going to have to, I think he could make a major difference, but he's going to have to get himself together in terms of his weight and, um, athleticism. I mean, as a power forward inside, he could wreak some havoc down there. So yeah, I'd like to see him come to the Hornets, but I'd like to see him get himself together both on and off the court. Cause we yeah. don't need no problems. We got problems already. Happy you know? Father's Day, Design. First of all, yeah. Um, tell you, this is his first one as well. Um, and then also, uh, I think he. I I was talking to uh, Bo Monty about this because mm-hmm. I've been hearing the the scuttlebutt about uh, New Orleans trading Zion Williamson to the Hornets for for the second pick, and. Online and uh, on the podcast circuit and stuff, it's gotten really contentious about the second pick. People want Scoot Henderson. Some people want Brandon Miller. And both camps seem to be setting the dudes up for failure because it's like if if he isn't at this point better than Zion Williamson, better than – I think last night I saw somebody say KD – Booker and Bradley Bill. Yeah, you gotta let them develop shit. Well, they they were saying like, well, if that if that's a good team and nobody's worried about how they fit together, Scoot Henderson and Lamelo gonna be the greatest team. I'm just like, why are y'all saying shit like this? It's just if we get this dude now, it's gonna be three three games in. People gonna be like, well, he didn't save the team. <laughs> Henderson is the G League dude. Uh, yeah, Scoot yeah, is okay. the the G League dude. Yeah, yeah, Brandon yeah. Miller is a shooter from Alabama. Okay, yeah, okay. Um, I think. <laughs> You can't go wrong with either one. It's, you know, yeah. the team needs whatever help it can get. Yeah. And I think, you know, Bo, when I was talking to Bo, he said in a heartbeat, if you can get Zion Williamson, you go ahead and get him. And honestly, that kind of convinced me because I really do believe Zion Williamson has the potential, potential. to be yeah, the best player in the league if he gets his stuff together. Yeah. And maybe this is the wake-up call for him to be like, man, I just got to get it together for about a while because – my stock is going down, down, down. And it's not like criminal stuff. It's just right, yeah. bad reputation stuff. You know, the injury stuff, the weight stuff, the porn stars tweeting for over a week about you stuff. So, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind having them here, but I, I agree with you too. We have a little too much going on off the court for, yeah. for somebody else to have more off the court issues. So hopefully that wouldn't be a problem. Plus here, we but... got new ownership stuff. So we don't know what's going to happen when they come in and, Right. In terms of management and personnel, because all that stuff is supportive of the team. Mm -hmm. So we don't know how that's going to work. And I do think Zion, he's going to grow up at some point. Yeah. like He ain't the first dude we've seen like have some some of these type of like embarrassing problems, but not necessarily, you know, criminal. How about saying these are the problems? I like these problems. Tony Styles asked, would you take Brady, Bradley Bill? Uh, from the the Wizards are shopping Bradley Bill around right now, uh, hmm. so I guess he's asking, would we like him on the Hornets? Um, I don't know. I don't know a lot about his game other than he's a prolific scorer, and uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I say no, um, mostly because I I do know his game. He's a mm-hmm. prolific scorer. Plays no defense. Oh, no defense. Hurt a lot. Um, I can do, I and. Can do he has a contract where he gets fifty million dollars a year, and he has a no trade clause. Oh wow! We'd have to take on both of those. I, Zion Williamson, I'd rather pay him. It's less than fifty million dollars, and he don't have a no trade clause. Yeah. So, yeah, Bradley just I don't. I feel like the people excited about having him on the market are people that don't watch Wizards games. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> like you just look at the stats and you're like, oh, he averaged 37 points. And you're like, yeah, you ain't watch none of this shit. Man. I've only seen him play like maybe once or twice last year. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like he's he's a he's a good scorer, but it's just if you're trying to like win games, yeah. It's it's no point because he's that dude that'll score 50 and then some random dude that never scores on the other team gets 30, 35 that night, which cancels out his 50. Word. 
Um, all right, let's get into the news. If you have more questions, continue to ask. Don't have to be basketball related, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, a flight got canceled. After, oh, wait, I forgot. Got to play my music so I know where to put the um the commercials, the commercials later so we can make this money. Make this money. Uh, you definitely don't want to mess that step up. So let's wait for that to, to pull up. Um, but yeah, feel free to ask questions throughout. They don't have to be sports related. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, a lot of stuff we haven't gotten to yet and all that stuff too. So if you want to uh, get my dad's opinion, put it in the question things. All right, now let's get ready for some news. A flight got canceled after a Delta Airlines crew member got arrested. Mm. Oh, arrested for what? Um, the thing he might have got people. The thing he might have gotten a fight. It was a new. It was uh from Edinburgh <laughs> to New York JFK. It got canceled on June 16th after a crew member was arrested. Uh, the arrest occurred minutes before departure, uh, stranding passengers on the flight. Okay, what was the crew members? Uh, you mean a, a, the the flight crew? Yeah, he's a member of the flight crew. Who was he fighting? Another member or somebody else or a passenger? Was he in the? Was he like one of the pilots or? or, or um, they just say attendant? they just say sixty one year old man oh. and crew member. They didn't say exactly what. Oh, man and crew okay. member. Mm-hmm. One of them had to be the pilot in order for them to be like we can't push the plane. Yeah, he was arrested on the. In connection with the Railways and Transport Safety Act of 2003, the act is broad, but notably covers the use of alcohol and drugs as it relates to aviation. Mm. However, the reasons for the June 16th arrest remain unknown. Oh, I don't want you lit fly my plane. I know, right? Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe it's Somebody probably... tell me to stay out of the cockpit, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I fly this my way where I work. We're going to Spain. <laughs> right, just flying with the signal yeah. light on. You yeah. hear somebody going 10 miles over the normal ass speed yeah. limit. Imagine going 355 miles an hour. No, thank you. We're going to be close to the ground today, neighbor. <laughs> Real close. Uh, yeah. Beyonce's concert in Stockholm was blamed for unexpectedly high Swedish inflation. Yeah. I read about that. Man, yeah. they must got Ticketmaster over Ticket, there too. Man. Yeah, no. <laughs> Swedish inflation fell by ten, fell below ten percent in May, but was still higher than expected. With some analysts suggesting superstar Beyonce had tipped the scales. Consumer prices rose by nine point seven percent in May year on year. Wow. Down from the ten point five percent in April, the first time inflation has come in under ten percent in over six months. A decrease in electricity and food prices contributed to the lower inflation rate in May, uh, while at the same time, cost of certain goods and services rose, for instance, hotels, restaurants, recreational services, and clothing, which is all stuff you need to get ready for the Beyonce concert. Yeah, and, uh, yep. you know, a lot of Americans actually went over there. Like, right. Because they I were, saw some. Uh-huh. Yeah, they was, yeah, yeah, people that we know, they was like, uh, yeah, the cost of the tickets and my traveling is actually cheaper. Wow. Than if I buy it in certain cities here in the states, particularly wow. if you didn't get like the pre-sale, like I did, like you had to pay like aftermarket prices. Yeah, baby, the cheap seats, like up high in the nosebleeds, is a few hundred dollars. Wow, yeah, for resale. Yeah, um, tens of thousands of fans flocked to Stockholm in the middle of May to catch the two concerts that kicked off her first solo tour in seven years. Estimates put the crowd at each concert at 46,000. Wow. With some forced to stay outside of the capitals as hotels filled up. Mm. It was reported that a number of fans had traveled from overseas to see the shows, taking advantage of the weak Swedish currency and lower ticket prices. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, hey, yeah. hey, Karen, on the show here, where are they actually having it? At the Bank Panther of Stadium? Mm-hmm. Oh, at the, at the Panther Stadium. That's mm-hmm. what I was hoping, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it holds what, like seventy thousand? Oh, I, I, oh, I don't know. Yeah. It's probably, but it's probably the biggest out. venue yeah, here in, is, the, yeah. in the city, most yeah. likely. And it makes sense. Like That's all right. the side, it don't make no sense in having it at the college. College right. is just not yeah, big not, enough. No. And with it being there, you can have a rain or shine. That's right. Yeah, I see. Yeah, 
Meanwhile, speaking of ticket sales, President Biden muscles Ticketmaster and SeatGeek to scrap hidden ticket fees after Taylor Swift debacle. Right, right. The shit don't make no sense because depending on the cost of your tickets, I'm not trying to be funny. The fees can actually be higher than the ticket itself. Wow. Literally, Man. depend on the depend on on the cost of your tickets because it's like you pay a, a surcharge fee, then another fee, then a state fee, then a fee fee, and it just because we can't fees. Shit don't make no sense, and 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 you actually do not know what the fees stand for. Yeah. So he yeah. called. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Seventy five thousand. That's what it holds. 75, oh. 74, 867. Wow. Um, yeah, Biden. Oh, okay. oh, but yeah, but say, and also I think I watched it. I don't know if I watched the documentary and seen the podcast, or I might have heard a podcast, and they was actually talking about Ticketmaster and their fees and things like that, and how it used to didn't be like this, and how mm -hmm. Ticketmaster uh basically has a monopoly on this, and a lot of bands. And should have been complaining. And I forgot they said one band like took them to Supreme Court because that was like this don't make no sense. Like y'all bully people. Then if we don't use you, we basically have no way That's in right. certain situations of even stuff, selling yeah. the tickets, yeah. you know, and things like that. So it's one of those things where they like, uh, yeah, this need, action needs to be broken up. It doesn't make sense. And then a lot of times, um, if you don't go with them, they'll be like, well, if you don't use us this time, you won't be able to use us next time oh. and shit like that. And they was like, nah, y'all shouldn't be able to to uh, dupe people into using y'all or nothing. Now, and it's hard for, because if I'm a band, guess what? My thing is, it's not my job to be able to do Eventbrite and all this. I mean, you can, yeah. and some artists do, <clears throat> yeah. but you know, it's just more convenient. That's why most people use it. Yeah, the move comes after Live Nation Entertainment, the parent company of Ticketmaster, faced criticism from the White House and Congress in January over ticket sales for pop star Taylor Swift's tour that included exorbitant hidden fees and platform outages, preventing some fans from buying tickets. Yeah, another thing we owe Taylor Swift and the Swifties, they made sure to, because the Beyonce did not experience this with her ticket sales. And I think a large part of that was because them, them white women went up there to Congress like, what the fuck was that? I can't we get wanna, online. We want to <laughs> speak to the manager of the company, of the country. Yeah. Joe Biden. Um, I can't get online. <laughs> Biden touted steps taken by Live Nation, Seat Geek, and other companies during White House remarks Thursday. And also recognized ticket sellers like TickPick that already provide upfront pit pricing to customers with no hidden fees. Uh, these are just the latest private sector leaders who are responding to my call for action. Biden said at a roundtable White House meeting with executives of the company on hand. I'm asking their competitors to follow suit and adopt an all in upfront pricing as well. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, it doesn't sound like it's going to necessarily eliminate the hidden fees. So Biden has also asked Congress to eliminate hidden fees altogether through the Junk Fee Pre Prevention Act, because this is also voluntary right now which is how you know companies are scared because they volunteering <laughs> to do something because yeah. they scared it's going to be a law. Yeah. Um, and so, the, so they're not saying eliminate the fees. They're just saying make them make them up, up front so people yeah. can know what they're paying see, for yeah. and decide if they want to do that. Right, yeah. because like, like, like let's say you go and you be like, well, I, I'm going to get, let's say, a $100 ticket. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you go $100. You know, you know, you got your normal state tax and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Let's say it brings it to when you know, 125. Mm -hmm. By the time they tag all their fees, this $100 ticket can cost you 175, 200, wow. 250. Mm -hmm. And you're like, where did these extra fees come from? My ticket was only $100. Mm -hmm. um, we have another question. <clears throat> what is your proudest moment for each of your boys, says Lakita? Um, that they grew up and became men. There you That's go. my proudest moment. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you, Lakita. Uh, next story. Trump tells a restaurant full of uh, uh, with pay tells restaurant patrons that were all it was full <laughs> and tells them all food for everyone yeah. and then leaves without paying. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they yeah. said they didn't ask for no food because he went outside. Y'all come out here, come out here and order, and order, and order. Yeah. Yep, he said food for everyone. Declared <clears throat> during a surprise restaurant stop in Little Havana in Miami. Uh, that place actually really good. <clears throat> And then he left without buying food for anyone. Surprise, surprise. Fresh off a plea to not guilty to criminal charges in the Miami federal court, Trump was all smiles when he entered the crowded restaurant Tuesday, wishing well wishers happy birthday. Well wishers saying happy birthday to the president on the eve of his 77th birthday. 
Trump to, so I'm okay. Here's the thing: how surprised, how much of a surprise was this stop? Because I feel like if Donald Trump stops in a restaurant, is I don't know that that's gonna go a hundred percent to happy birthday. In, in unless y'all did some prep ahead of time mm-hmm. that you yeah, just don't yeah. want to ad- yeah. admit to. Secret you have to do prep, right? I'm about to yeah, say you security. Know. Yeah, yeah, you have to. He he was. Yeah. This place was on the tour. Like yeah. these people knew he was coming. You ain't yeah. gonna have randos in there with a with a former president. Yeah, because you know you got some people back in the kitchen to say like I'm gonna put something special in that sauce, dog. Right, so, right. So no, it's hard for me to believe it's a complete he, surprise. Yeah. Well, it's not even eat. not because of his safety. I'm yeah. just saying, if you went to any restaurant in America and it's like, it's Donald Trump is here, it's going to probably be half and half at least. Like, yeah. it's going to be somebody in there like, man, fuck that nigga yeah. in somebody the back. Somebody's going to be like, boo, boo that nigga, yeah. boo. Uh, Trump supporters told NBC6 South Florida they thought the 45th president was treated unfairly when he was indicted on more than three dozen counts of mishandling classified information obtained while he was in the white house well to be fair they think everything is unfair to him That's right yeah. no matter what <laughs> right. he does yes. not the consequences of his actions no, oh no, no. no. yeah <laughs> his visit lasted roughly 10 minutes leaving no time for more much other than shaking hands and waving yeah, he didn't need- neither the restaurant nor trump's campaign has replied to a request for comment um so yeah, and they, I mean, there's no point in getting the comment from him because he's just gonna say, "I didn't say I would buy the food. I said yeah. food for everyone. Yeah. You know, everyone should just have food. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't say how they should pay for it. Right? You know. Um. So we talked about um a well, we kind of talked about this yesterday. So there was a wellness chat. They had an AI that took over the chat for this food for this eating disorder line it was uh it was about helping people at the national eating disorders association um the employees that did the phone line were like hey we want to uh unionize and so the management said and we don't want you to unionize so we're gonna just hire an artificial intelligence to go through a prompt and 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 talk to people and uh it didn't work because they took the bot offline mm. uh after its harmful focus on weight loss so mm. you know it 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 basically was just pulling from the internet and you know the internet has a lot of different information on it mm. um and so i didn't experience none of this shit in real life so it ain't like it can relate to you yeah the humans who work the line had know what the triggers are they know right. they, many of them have had eating disorders themselves and so you know the, the they know how to talk to another human being that's in an emotional crisis that's calling the hotline and the robot is just like you know lose weight you fat bitch i know and, right people kill yourself or whatever yeah, then it hangs up on you stop calling me <laughs> right call your mama <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, they said uh the robot is still recommending the standard device of noting the number of calories, adopting a safe da- daily calorie deficit, which Dr. Kanansen said is problematic advice for a person with an eating disorder. Any focus on intentional weight loss is going to be exacerbating encouraged to the in encouraging to the eating disorder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, depending um, on what it is, yes. Yeah, uh, they explain for some people, hyperfixation on weight control can take innocent dieting or nutrition advice to a place that gets extreme and gets out of someone's control. Yeah, you're talking to people with, it's not like you're talking to people that are like, I need to talk to a dietitian. You're talking to people that are like, I have an eating disorder, meaning your mind and your body have different chemical imbalances that are controlling the decisions you're making. And then the robot is like, uh, you know, just get a calorie dis- deficit. Okay, right. well. If I'm saying I hate my body and I'm actually anorexic, meaning I have body dysmorphia and I think I'm fat when I'm not, telling me to, to eat less is not actually good advice, you know? You're but a robot helping. can't know that. Right. You know? Um, so, which is why I'm not worried about AI taking over yet. Like everybody keeps talking about, you know, artificial intelligence is coming for us. It's not good yet. It, you know, it might be soon, but. We good for at least the next six months, man. You take yeah. it can't take over the job. This one right. week on the job, this shit got fired. So they they are they get... gonna go back and talk to them about unionizing now? Because obviously they plan did not work. So y'all gonna have to pay these people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't see them. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't see anything about if they're gonna hire people. 
um in order to do this um right so yeah you're gonna just fire everybody and get a whole new staff which means you're gonna have to invest in training them invest in you're gonna have a lot of errors you can know people new at the job a lot of errors right. a lot of mistakes saying the wrong shit to people yep. yeah they don't see anything <laughs> about them saying um what yeah hiring people back they they said some of the suggestions they had i guess um, among other suggestions, Tessa has recommended using a scale of using once a week and tracking body measurements, energy levels, and mood. She said the bot told her that measurements could be tracked with skin fold caliber. Oh, no. So that's not the suggestion. That's a weight loss suggestion. Yeah. They don't even mention if they're going to hire the people back, which I mean, which I think means they won't. It don't even seem like an option right now. Uh, the Supreme Court upholds Voting Rights Act in Alabama redistricting case. Uh, this was shocking to me. Yeah, I know. Uh, I was pretty sure we was losing the right yeah, to vote that's right. Uh, this round. Uh, I do wonder, you know, what happened. Uh, your boy Clarence Thomas, mm. he left a, he wrote a 50-page um, dissertation on why we should not have um, backed this. Uh, we should not have upheld the racial gender gerrymandering uh, rules that of um, the rules that prohibit racial gender gerrymandering. Who, who paid him? Probably Harlan Crow, but he's 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 bitter, isn't he? Yeah, What's wrong with Clarence, man. He's bitter, man. Yeah, there's a podcast I'm listening to uh, about him um, right now, and it's really good. Um, uh, it's called Slow Burn. I think it's season eight. And uh, it's about Clarence Thomas this this uh, this season. Uh, the first three episodes are out already. <laughs> America's Blackest Child, Smiling Faces, and I'm Their Guy is number three. Uh, great great work over there. Um, so if, if y'all should check it out if you get if you're in the podcast like me. But yeah, man, he's a huge Something. to me until. Until the Harlan Crow thing, I think I really never understood him. I know people claim to understand him, and they believe in his, like, and I think people need narrative, so they need to believe that it's a, like, conscientious uh, choice that can uphold itself to, like, some sort of criticism. Like, this is what I really believe. But I, I, I truly think it's as simple as once he started getting that money, it was just... Okay, I'm yeah. I'm I'm there. I'm theirs now. I can be sold. Yeah, <laughs> like whatever he was, I can be bought. Whatever he was when he was militant in college and all that stuff, and he used to talk about don't date white women and all this shit. He was like, I was broke, nigga. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like whatever that With was. All these morals. Maybe that's the real him. Maybe that's not. Whatever that was. Once he started messing with conservatives and getting in that money circle. Yep. He's been uh he's been one of theirs. Yeah. So. But yeah, uh, glad they upheld it. It was a four to five vote. Close. Yeah, I think Roberts and Kavanaugh <laughs> broke with the Democratic no. justices. Um, I mean, with the Republicans. It, no, they. I mean, they. They. So they broke with the Republicans yeah, to join right, right, the right, three yeah, liberal yeah, justices. Yeah, yeah, so I was surprised. Yeah. Um, and we'll see. You know how much that continues, but. Uh, I I did not think that would happen. Yep. Um, Rob Roberts maybe, but Kavanaugh he kind of that's Trump's man, isn't it? Didn't mm -hmm. he put him in there? Yeah. So I didn't expect Kavanaugh. Him. Um, Kagan of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it was. I was surprised by that, and I don't really know why they did it. Yeah. Mm -mm. For it to come back up and they turn around been... and vote opposite next time. Yeah, and that's at the highest level, so you know that's like gold right there. Right. So, but you know people can't appeal it. But we'll see what happens in the yeah, future. Yeah, which which will happen. So it's one of those things where, okay, what is the motive here? You did it this time, but I I cannot see you continually voting this way. Right. Yep. All right, let's do some uh, fucking with black people. Fucking with black people. <laughs> We're just fucking with them black people. We're just fucking with them blacks. We're just fucking with, 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 with
Uh, court transcripts uh, exposed Donald Trump Jr.'s racist email saying Manhattan resembled Harlem due to black residents. Ugh. Mm hmm. Mm. I don't understand about all gentrification that's been happening in New York City. Okay. Well, it's Manhattan. Manhattan's been considered white. Like when I was there, it was black and diverse and all this stuff. And I guess it didn't used to be like that. Right. Uh, Donald Trump Jr. has found himself in hot water. When's the last time he wasn't in hot water? This nigga ain't never been no lukewarm water. I know cold, cold water. water. He just um, likes to say so. He wants attention, doesn't he? All right. Yes, wonder, where, wonder where you got that from. All right. He loved hot water. Uh, he found himself in hot water after offensively after offensive private emails about black and Mexican communities have been exposed in court. Yeah, this ain't surprise. Niggas was like, that nigga racist from the time mm -hmm. he stepped out on the stage. Right. Uh, the legal case revolved around Texas financier uh, Gentry Beach, a friend of Trump Jr., who's been in a years-long court fight with his former hedge fund employer, Taraji Capital Management. In the suit, uh, Beach accuses the hedge fund of withholding millions of dollars in pay. This lawsuit has led to a separate argument about whether a judge should permit the public access uh, to offensive emails that were shared among the group consisting of Beach, Donald Trump Jr., and others. Those emails in question were only recently added to the case during a retrial this year after a $91 million judgment Beach and his co-defendant won was thrown out on appeal. Beach has now been fighting to have Trump Jr.'s name redacted in case documents. However, some of the emails were discussed in open court during this year's retrial in one email exchange about a Beach family move to Upper Manhattan. Don Jr. referred to the area as Harlem due to the number of Black residents that now live there. I hear the theme song of the Jeffersons playing in the background. <laughs> what is a specific it is to be in that bitch? What is he talking about? Uh, that's what he's saying. That's exactly what he's saying. I'm moving on up. <laughs> uh, that's actually some really good racism. I got to give it to him. I, I hate to give it to him, but that's not your running the mill in words that I was expecting. That's, that's some pretty A1 yeah. cultural reference racism. <laughs> Yeah, he, he thought that thing out, didn't he? Yeah, I hear the theme song. That was like it can be a type 15 or type five, it's opening up for somebody. In other emails, he complained about members of Congress encouraging Mexicans to come to the U.S., encourage the Mexicans to come to the U.S. and give them another excuse to not learn English. When I have to speak to my grandchildren in Spanish, at least I know I will have you to thank. To which Beach responded, We're going to stop this wetback issue dead oh. in his tracks. Oh, well, damn. It sound like the people playing guest race for us. Oh, we're out there. Beach also made separate offensive remarks about the Jewish community. The emails are years old and were sent out between 2005 2008. No wonder they want Hunter Biden's laptop because they know their oh. laptops got some shit on them. <laughs> uh, well, zero to 100, Karen. Okay. This is a hundred. Anything with him is like on the permanent a hundred list. Yep. All right. Because it's I, him. I agree a hundred. All right. So yeah. we got two hundreds going around. I give it a seventy-five. Uh the 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 Jefferson joke was too good for me to <laughs> truly hold hold this to a hundred. I it he actually thought about that racism. Yeah, okay. Uh and I appreciate the effort. Yeah. Uh let's see. Jack Harlow, oh. uh, who is a, a rapper uh actor white guy um who i don't know anyone i don't know a lot of people who are fans of his i'm not saying he clearly does have fans but i just don't know uh, a lot of people that mess with his music like that i heard of him that and that's about it yeah he started in the white man can't jump remake they just did i haven't seen that either uh haven't been interested i, I don't know who's funding the jack harlow industrial complex does he have a lot of tattoos no, you're thinking about Post Malone. I just put his picture in the chat. Okay. Uh, well, he raised eyebrows when a photo surfaced of him wearing a bonnet. Okay. Oh, wow. Nothing yeah. Wrong with, nothing wrong with a good bonnet. They get to, I guess they tied a bed head, too. Uh, they wake up, they have you everywhere. He's trying to get some protective styles, I guess. I guess so. So that's him in a bonnet um, at the game. Cultural appropriation. Uh, taking pictures with people. Um, I yeah, don't know no. if he was trying to not be recognized. I don't know. Curl. Trying to get his curls straight. If it's a fashion accessory, you know, I don't I don't know the reasoning behind it, but a lot of people did not like this. Yeah, I, I don't care. Uh as the post went viral, social media has some words. They don't love it for the they don't love it rapper, with some accusing him of cultural appropriation. 
I mean, it's a head bonnet. Anybody could have bought it anywhere. You know, you know, white women wear bonnets too, y'all, right? It ain't just someone just... tweeted at him. You know, I thought you was cool at Jack Harlow, but this, oh, I'm taking this is disrespect. I need <laughs> you to take off. Yeah, they ain't uh, got nothing else to do. Was it Sunday morning? Uh, June 11th. So yes. Uh, yep, that makes sense. <laughs> Cause, why? Cause there's nothing else to do, Sal. Someone said the fact that Twitter is mad at Jack Harlow is, for wearing a bonnet is absurd. It's a piece of cloth. Someone responded, they're mad because if a black woman does it, she's called ghetto for it. But Jack, a white man, is getting none of that same. Smoke. I don't know why that ad started playing loud as shit, but yeah, so uh, yeah, zero to 100, Karen. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I, I actually, right. did this right here is not worth the you know getting all riled up Mm-mm. okay maybe he just didn't want bad head all right dad how about you well, i'll give the people who got riled up a little uh credit for you know some people snapping anything mm-hmm. some have to give him probably about a um, 30 something like that you okay know? his interval is 25 so we'll go at 25 for you um i'll give it uh man i'm I, i'd be lying if i said i was bothered by it but i do understand that Lately, a lot of people have been going around showing like dress code, like for restaurants. And when a lot of dress codes are like no bonnets, there's a lot of people, including other black women, that get on black women for going out in public in a bonnet, mm-hmm. uh, going to the airport in a bonnet, stuff like that. So there's something there. I don't think it's necessarily anything to do with actually Jack Hart Halo. I don't think he's, I think because of anti blackness. And people, you know, kind of shitting on black people's culture and stuff. You got people um, associating that to Jack Harlow. Sensitive, but yeah. it's not like he woke up and said, I think I would like to shame people for wearing bonnets. Um, and I don't think that. Yeah. I, I, so it doesn't bother me in that way. Yeah. Um, I think it would bother me maybe if he had said some stuff about black women past or something. Yes. But, you know, it's just more like a goofy thing. Um, uh, Peter came out and said something directly towards us. Yeah, about having I would like to know why he's wearing it. If he thinks it's just a fashion thing, or he really is like, nah, I think this is better for my hair, um, and and for whatever reason. So I would like to know that. But yeah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not upset hey, with the guy I, at all. I got a confession to make. <clears throat> Your mom ordered some bonnets from somewhere. She had this nice blue one. I said, hey, can I have that? She said, yeah. I said, where'd you get it from? She said, Amazon. I said, can I have it? She's like, yeah. So I wear it when I paint. It's got mm-hmm. paint all over it and shit. I yeah, they have, they serve purposes. I'm going to wear it to the grocery store tomorrow. See what yeah. kind of feedback. I've, uh, <laughs> particularly men who wear like threads and have like, you know, yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. long hair. Yeah. Uh, some of them, I've seen some of them go viral on TikTok right. for using it. They was like, oh, this is what women do. Like, yeah, because you don't right. want your hair smacking you in the That's face, right. all down your neck, breaking Very. your skin out. Because the yeah. sometimes the product you use in your hair don't always agree with the rest of your skin. I got enough color in my hair, as you can tell. I think also people are like, um, People harbor a lot of resentment about the double standard, and mm-hmm. then they blame the people, the individual for the double standard. Mm-hmm. And that's just never been my thing. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think it's such a short sighted way of looking at life to be like, this individual is causing this. It's like, no, it's a phenomenon. Maybe they're privileged. Maybe they get to take, maybe they're taking advantage of it, quote unquote. But it's not like they walked out the house and changed the way the world operated is the our world was already fucked up yeah um but yeah i i don't know it, it didn't bother me that way but i do get bothered by sometimes you know you see the dress codes that specifically seem to target black fashion mm-hmm. you know no no this no That's that right, yeah and uh i don't know what to do with it by the way like i i get bothered by it but i also understand to some extent because we live in a in a world where we have certain dining establishments that want to establish a certain like atmosphere yep. and certain shit is counterproductive to that if that's what you want to do and it's your private business so if you say no shoes no shirt no service i get it you know that no one looks at that as a racial thing but if you were to say no shoes no shirt no uh bonnets no sagging pants now it feels racial to me no cornrows yeah exactly <laughs> like so i don't you know and i don't and i and to be frank i don't really know what to do with that because i if i was running a restaurant 
and I wanted a certain clientele, you know, like white people, you know, we code it white, but it's not really white. But, you know, like Sullivan's is like, you got to wear a jacket and a, and a button up shirt. Yeah. And it's like, OK, so you got to wear a jacket and button up shirt. That's not really anti-black. No one thinks that. But if you said a uh, jacket and no, 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 uh, no, no bonnet shoes, no yeah, athletic shoes, then people would no, take it that way. Yeah, no but to me, those dress codes essentially say the same thing, which is yeah. dress up. So I don't know how you tell black people specifically we want you to dress up without saying something like that. So I, you know, I just try to avoid all that stuff. I, true, true. And uh, I think uh, made me think when we went to uh, that Wendy's, how that dude walked out of that uh, Wendy's and he had no shoes on, but he sure was served. I was like, yeah. well, I guess that no shirt, no shoes, no service don't mean nothing. It just depends on, yeah, I, I think a Wendy's is a place where you would, wouldn't be shocked if, if so they serve somebody but i think if we was pay <clears throat> if we was up in that restaurant yesterday that dude came in we oh, would feel the way and he was white so i don't like it's it's like there's a gray area that's happening that i don't think people want to acknowledge that's true because we keep going to like it's a completely racial thing and some of these restaurants are black restaurants that serve black people it's a class thing more than it's a race thing right and eating out does include some class stuff in it like it, like I, whether you like it or not, it isn't eating out in certain establishments. Part of the shit you're paying for is the class of it, the yeah. exclusion that is happening. So, uh, and then of course, running a restaurant, I've seen some of the videos online when they have people fucking like twerking in thongs on the table. And I'm sorry, that shit is ridiculous. And that's not, I'm not going to claim that as a black thing. Like, mm-hmm. like only that's just us being in our culture. Like, yeah. no, the fuck that's not. Yeah. We know how to sit down and eat. So yes, we do. y'all getting carried away. I don't need cheeks in the, in my face with my, uh, you know, my eggs at brunch right? to try to prove something, you know? So I, I can understand that it's a gray area, but this one didn't tap my, like, this mm-hmm. one didn't fuck with me that way. Yeah. So y'all remember we covered the story a couple years ago, but Mecklenburg County is now reopening the historic site of Ladder, Ladder. Ladder Plantation, yeah. calling it now Ladder Place. Yeah. And they're now going to design an educational program for it. Right. You can't have weddings there no more, right? Yeah. It was renamed right. in February, but closed after organizers last year promoted a racist Juneteenth event. Uh, I still argue that wasn't a racist event, but saying that dude it don't matter. To use his words right. So yeah, you, you fill out with him. If you do lose the trust of the community and you were operating in that space, I you can't operate in that space. That's just right. how it goes. Uh, because first and foremost, a place like that should serve the black people in our community. <laughs> well, I don't think we need to be seeing like plantation weddings and, know, and shit like that. You know, <laughs> like what lessons does that say? Yeah, I, I hate that he didn't get to the event, but the good thing is they stopped the motherfucking weddings. The horror of that. the horror of the of the plantation is your playground. That that doesn't right. seem like a good y'all, thing. Right. Like I said, unless y'all gonna go up and uh have weddings at the Holocaust locations. Get out my face. Yeah, it just seems fucked up. County officials are working with Virginia-based Design Minds Incorporated to create a comprehensive new format that would include a more complete story of life on the plantation that exhibits with exhibits showing the lasting impact of slavery in Mecklenburg County. Cass Otley, who led the protest against Ladder Plantation Juneteenth event last year, said she felt hopeful after the first draft of the plan and that discomfort is necessary for growth. You go to a Holocaust museum, you learn the history and feel the pain for the Jewish people. Why is it not different at Ladder Plantation? Why are they not teaching the history of those Africans that were enslaved? Oddly said, it's because white people don't feel want to feel uncomfortable. Nothing ever changes when you're comfortable. You guys ever, have you guys ever been out there to Ladder Plantation? I remember going I once as a little kid. Little kid, yeah. but I haven't been as an adult. On a school and, trip. And you know yeah. little kids. I'm trying to find it. I was paying nobody's That's attention. Right, yeah. I was paying a lot of attention because I was woke, but I, I think they had I wouldn't woke as a kid. Mm-hmm. I think it was a black guy who was responsible for doing some type of programming yeah, out there. It was him. Yeah. When they kind of raked him across the coals. Yeah, it was interesting because I, I read his quotes, I read his plan. <laughs> And I didn't think it was anything wrong with it. I really think the problem was the way he shrugged off explaining it to the community. Mm -hmm. You know, some black people will have a problem with it. That's the thing about slavery and trauma and all this stuff. And people think there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. But it's really not, to be honest. There's going to be detractors whatever way you decide. I'm working on a project right now 
about black history and and trauma and comedy and all this stuff and i'm you know people raise issues with certain points and i'm like you're right and then there's gonna be somebody that feels the opposite way exactly yeah. so when this thing comes out there's gonna be somebody that don't fuck with it for whatever their reasons yeah. are you just we as a team just need to be comfortable with what we're putting out um so his thing was the it was gonna be a white former slave owner on the run from black people uh after uh i think the civil war after juneteenth or something and it was it was clearly farcical it was gonna be you know picking on the white dude and his ignorance but uh either way the community didn't believe it or, or want to hear that shit yeah and he just was kind of like i know what i'm doing i've been doing this forever how dare y'all question me and it didn't go now he ain't well, got a job right yeah because that's like the one thing you can't be in that position you got to be like no let's talk about it yeah yeah you have to talk about it particularly in that position you have to be able to use your words. You have to be able to explain yourself because people are like, hey, if we're going to give you money, we need to know where our money is going. And if something arises, you need to be able to have the words to articulate these things so that they make sense to the populace at large. That's true. I wonder if when like people like Clarence Thomas go on one of these things, are they like, and that's where the slaves are singing and happy. I know, right? Having a great time. Hey, that should, reminds me. Think that okay, bullshit. I used to work. I had a contract. You know, I was in IT. I had a contract with a company here. I won't mention their name, uh, but it's called Husqvarna. Anyway, <laughs> there was a guy that worked there. His name was Jonathan, and he wrote an essay for school. And um, he had a, he was working on it, and he, you know he's supposed to be doing work work, and he's there doing that stuff. So um, I, I was over. It was over near my workstation. So I started uh, taking a look at it. Okay. Sorry, I was t I took a look at it, and basically, it's exactly what you just described. It was a the question that the instructor asked. Write an essay uh, explaining why uh, the slaves sang and were happy all the time when they're out working in the field. Mm -hmm. And he said it was because black people were traditionally very happy. You could, you know, pretty much treat them every kind of way they just wouldn't uh mm. they couldn't be broken from their spirit they're highly religious and all this other stuff it's like i i, I wanted to talk to him about it, but right. i just you know he was about probably 22 he's in college you know they're going to central piedmont getting ready to transfer to another school i was like he's been indoctrinated to believe that we're just Happy go lucky and right. all this stuff that happens to us is just water in the bridge. We can just go on and <laughs> kill each other, you know. Yeah, because you know what's funny it's if amazing. you if you flat out ask them, do you want somebody to own you? No. I know, but right. then why would you think somebody else I would want to be owned and they would just be They're happy just singing, and pleased, singing, like ball here against their will, can't even speak their own right. language? Yeah, I think that might be the biggest tale of like white supremacy because it needs to live in a lie, and I think mm -hmm. the biggest. There's no bigger hypocrisy than America's founded on you're not going you're not going to tell me what to do. I'm going to take my freedom. Mm -hmm. But then they can't understand how black people of the time would feel similarly about their freedom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I don't need I would like to also be free. And what and we weren't talking about high taxes on tea, you know. Right. Mm. Exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> but it's such a disconnect. The yeah. founding fathers, yeah. you know, and all that shit. Uh, but yeah, they said initial plans for latter plays published to the county's website in December show options that include living history exhibits, a research center, and in-person interpretation. One option presented in design shows a new visitor center, new replica slave dwellings, and a gazebo. Another design option shows a smaller visitor center, public art, and expanded parking. The final design option shows no new visitor center uh, and with exhibited, exhibits added in existing historical structures. So it looks like now they'll be telling more about history. And yeah. I think that's good. That's what we needed. I I, I didn't even know this, they did other stuff there. Cause when I went as a kid, we just got like a, you know, like a tour of like, this is what a plantation is and what happens mm -hmm. here. I didn't realize motherfuckers was getting married there. Yeah, they have a crazy. rap, they have a raptor center there and right. fishing and all that other stuff. But you're right. I've been there recently. I just went to go uh, fish, but they had shut down all of the activities there because they were like saying we need to, I don't know, redefine what this is. But like you mm. said, people, no matter what you do, somebody's going to be unhappy. Yeah. yeah. And the, but the main thing is, just tell the truth. 
Tell yeah. the truth and, you know, let them deal with it. And that's the thing. Let them deal with it. And yeah. they don't deal let with it well, with which is it. the yeah. problem, yeah. you know, uh, in the first place, you know, because they don't want to sit in it because it, quote unquote, make them feel uncomfortable, guilty. Mm -hmm. But it's a thing that shit happened yeah. and you can't erase it happening. And particularly here in America, black people, as long as black people exist, it's going to be a, 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 a you're going to have to remember the history. Yeah. And so this is why white supremacy tries to do everything it can to eradicate mm -hmm. black and brown people. Well, particularly black people, slaves and ancestors of slaves specifically, because then, because if you eradicate us, then you don't have to worry about teaching all this history because it, quote unquote, don't affect the rest of the group, even mm -hmm. though. Some of these other groups have actually been done wrong by the United States yeah. too. And you've actually paid these people in some way, shape, form or fashion. You know, you still may have dipped them, but they got some I forms agree. of compensation. Yeah, I think not even, everybody, but some. I think even when you get rid of you can't get rid of black people. They that's not gonna happen. Oh no. But I think that's why they're trying to get rid of the CRT, quote unquote. And just marginalize educating doing, yeah. people about history of the United States in schools because it's like if you can't get rid of the people get rid of what happened to them by making sure you can't bring it up you don't talk about it you yeah. don't learn you yeah. know yeah. all right zero and to 100 oh i'm sorry uh this right here gets a zero because i'm glad that they're reopening it i'm glad that they got rid of the weddings and things like that so you know i have no problem uh no problem right. uh you know, uh, with this at all. And yeah, I do agree. If you know, a lot of it is since we can't get rid of the people, we'll just pass these laws. Yeah. But still, even with that, the goal still is to I know I'm not I'm not disagreeing with you. I was just saying that's never gonna happen. Agreed. So then they the next best thing is well then don't teach the kids. Yeah, that's crazy. So, just, so they yeah. just walk and, around. And, and let their parents and grandparents right. die out. So yeah, and it's, they and it's, pass the, it's one of the few things. Down. It's one of the few things you have to be careful because it's one of the few things I think a lot of black people unwittingly agree with white people on. Mm -hmm. Conservative white people, they agree with them without thinking about it. They agree coming from a different place, which is I never want to experience trauma. I don't want my kids to learn about anything that makes them uncomfortable. Da, 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 da. And so you would also like your kid not to learn about slavery. They would like their kids not to learn about slavery. And we can't have a country full of fucking idiots that don't know the history of the country because that is how you repeat shit. That Absolutely. is how so the Voting can... Rights Act gets struck right. down because we 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 take our foot off the gas because we don't we we get tired emotionally and want to tap out. And I don't think I think this is a time where you really can't. Yeah, mm -mm. that selective history thing just doesn't, you know, yeah. learn this, don't learn that. I have one question, Roderick. Mm -hmm. I, we don't have to talk about it now, but uh, I saw an article um, this week that asked the question, why is it some black people and some prominent black people uh, um, uh, join this whole white supremacy um, this, they 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 accept and actually support the idea of white supremacy, like say a Clarence Thomas or that Enrico guy who was with the Proud Boys or whoever he is, and they mentioned several people like say Candace Owens, people like them. Why are they so adamant that black people are the problem and that uh, white supremacy doesn't exist? And like I said, we don't have to talk about it now, but I'd like to send you that article. When I get back home, you probably already read it, but I just want you to think about it. I haven't read it, but I mean, you know, we talked about it a little bit Friday. I, I don't think it's that deep. I think Me either. it's easy to go over there and be exceptional because um, you're one of the few. And uh, one of the problems with the way we treat intelligence in America is that we treat it with a scarcity mindset, meaning if we're in a classroom, someone has to be the smartest. Mm -hmm. And we're, you know, when we have a graduation where we got magna cum laude, he's got to give a speech. Baccalaureate. You know, um, we. Valedictorian. And shit. Yeah. So yeah. we we treat we treat it like it's a, com a precious commodity where only a few people can have it. So what happens for stupid people is that they see only a few people get to be at the top because that means you're smart if you're one of the few. Mm -hmm. So I think what happens with those black people is I could be among the 80% of black people that vote and support 
democratic candidates and democratic policies and stuff like that. They're generally liberal leaning things that help the community. Yeah. But then I'm just one of, I'm eight of the 10, mm-hmm. but what if I could be over here with that one, that, that, that 10%. Well, now I'm the talented 10th. Now I'm smarter than you. Now I'm, I'm saying my ability to be separate from the community means I'm better from the community. You know, as a kid that was kind of smart growing up, everything I was involved in that was, was for smart people always kind of took me away from community except for like programs specifically designed for black kids. So like AP class, I'm one of the only black kids in there. In there. Um, when it comes to like uh, these after school programs and stuff like that, the, the things that bus you uh, to places or, or you got to drive out to UNC Charlotte. I wanted a few black kids and guess what it's doing? Taking me away from Yorkwood, taking me away from my community. So you start thinking like, oh, this is what it means to be smart. This is what it means to be good. This is what it means to be better. And so many people take it to heart in that I'm not part of the community because I'm better than the community. And I don't think I ever really lost that connection because, you know, the kids in my neighborhood and stuff, they were still my social circle. I never felt isolated from them. Yeah. Yeah. But some black people did. And I think to this day, you even hear Clarence Thomas use it as an excuse. You're a fucking 80 year old man. And you're still talking about, uh, they used to call me the blackest kid. And like, mm-hmm. yeah, it, when you were 10, I used to pick cotton when I was three months old. Yeah. I'm like, but you, <laughs> you not, that's, so I think it's, it's no excuse for it. And then of course it's lucrative. Right, that's the next Absolutely, step. Absolutely, yeah. So, so now that I'm one of the few black people, I get paid for everything I rail against. I say this is affirmative action. Well, people don't think Clarence Thomas is an exceptional Negro. They don't think he's an exceptional human being, but he's exceptional in that he is a black person. When no black people would say what he's saying, so he becomes exceptional by nature, right? I'm I, Harlan Crow is not lining up to give every black person some money. But the one nigga that'll say, I hate the blacks, he got a checkbook wide open for him. Candace Owens is not a very, like, she's never presented any point that made me think she was smart. She's just willing to say stuff that isolates her from the community and denigrates black people, and white people will pay a premium for that. Mm-hmm. If any of these dudes, you know, Bomani could do this tomorrow. He could come out tomorrow and be like, actually, I actually hate black people. And they wouldn't care about anything he's ever said before. Mm -hmm. They put him on TV that night and be like, we got another one, y'all. Pay him all the money until the black people stop listening to him as well. So um, that's why I think they end up on that side, uh, at least from the experiences I've seen. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's also, you know, one of the things to where... I think that Trayvon Martin and George Floyd and some of these other people, I've realized uh, with all the uprising, there were a lot of black people who felt that way. And then like the reality of shit started sinking in and they started looking around them. And a lot of them for the first time came to realization of, Hey, I got to get back to my people. Mm -hmm. And so this is why, and, and my heart goes out to them because this is why you had a lot of people having a hard time looking at their white friends, white family members, white coworkers, you know, all these, you know, these places and spots that have always accepted them. Now, when they have the conversation, the conversations are completely different. Now, when they have the conversation, they start hearing shit that they ignored. The other people mm-hmm. will be like, nigga, don't you hear that? They're like, nah, mm-hmm. I don't hear that. But now all of a sudden it's like the scales fell off their eyes for some of them. And once the scales fell off their eyes, the white people were looking around like you, all of a sudden you've changed. You don't change. You ain't saying, no, they're Mm -hmm. not. And so Mm -hmm. they had to, for some of them had to sever and cut off relationships that they've had for decades since they've been children. And that's hard to do. You too woke. (laughs) Yeah. We've definitely heard from people like that. And, you know, it's, you know, it's, I mean, race is a head trip. Yes, it is. You know, it's it's got a lot of people messed up. It's everyone thinks they have like different tactics. I think. I've, I've all the reading and shit that I've done, all the thinking about it I've done. I know where I'm at in life right now, but uh, you know that could change. And also, other people are aren't there yet, you know. So, I, you hopefully people decolonize their minds or start thinking. But it's hard because a lot of people get frustrated by that. A lot of people get emotional about it, and they rather run from it. You know, they're like a, yes. a kid at a 
it's like taking a kid to a big city. They get ex exhausted by just the amount of stimuli yeah. that are getting activated because race is is that is that um, at once imperceptible, but also affects everything. Yeah, true. Um, all right, now let's get into some guest the race because we were just talking about stuff, making it sound like we were too good, you know, but. <laughs> time for people to understand that it's a lot of racism that goes on uh, around these parts uh, uh, too. And the, and the audience uh, plays a big part of it. Um, here we go. It's time to guess the race. 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 All right, guess the race time. You know how we do. We go around the the globe, find every articles, guess the race of the people involved, and uh, of course, everyone plays along. Does is on my dad, Karen, and the chat room. First story: A man was arrested. A alleged killer was arrested after calling a housekeeper to help clean up the murder scene. Oh no! Uh, Thirty-four. Now why am I in it? <laughs> that would be my question. A 34-year-old Florida man is accused of killing an elderly woman then calling housekeeping to help tidy up the scene. The victim reportedly had an order of protection against her killer, Anthony Michael Carrado, who also accused of severely beating an elderly man Wednesday at Golden Gates Estate in Collier County, Florida. Well, dang. Deputy said around 2.30 p.m. he called a housekeeper to help him clean up the residence. When the housekeeper arrived, a blood-stained Carrado led her to the bathroom where the female victim was located. So he didn't even move the body. Oh, <gasps> Wow. So she, he just like that's privilege right there. They yeah, gotta move the yeah. Body. Housekeeping in there, you ain't even be like, you know what? I cut myself, clean this up. They was like, nope, like, here's the body and everything. Yeah. How did you describe the job on the phone? I know, right? Ah! A, a quick cleanup. I need somebody that can lift like about 150 pounds. Yeah, I know anything about biological waste. Yeah. <laughs> now what do you do if it's like a lot of blood? <laughs> They not don't no don't ignore that screaming in the background. That's, they ain't worry about that. How to get rid of DNA? Yeah, yeah. sir. Yeah. Uh, 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 you hired me to dust. If I took like a if I took one of them UV lights, would I still be able to see the blood when y'all got done cleaning or not? Yeah, y'all got, got any bleach down there? Right. Yeah. Bleach? I hope they no bleach. Don't take that away. How good are y'all with DNA? <laughs> the frightened housekeeper reportedly told Carrado she needed to run to her car for cleaning supplies. And then drove off. <laughs> Goddamn Surprise. right. <laughs> Driving off called a 911. Uh, I wouldn't want to be next. I don't blame them. I'll be back. Right. <laughs> I do yeah. this, and next thing you know, I'm dead. Fuck that. Yeah, right. Man. And then he got to call another house cleaner after he killed you. It's just a terrible know, scheme. Right? Damn. Uh, deputies and they be like, this is the seventh house cleaner we sent out this I week. Know. This must be a serial cleaner. <laughs> uh, so, so deputies immediately responded to the residents when they located the deceased female. They found a male victim in another room wrapped in a blanket with Damn. severe head injuries. Damn. Uh, they also discovered a bloody hammer in the residence where they saw blood on the walls and floors. Hammer. Oh, yeah. I'm not cleaning all that up. Right. Up, up, up. That, you know what? She drove away and she dialed 911. Yeah. Y'all need to come here. It's a body. I don't know if it's real or not, but y'all need to come see it. I bet she got out of blood is everywhere. She said, I'm gonna work at the mall. I don't want no more house cleaning. Mm -hmm. Uh they you know how they like to do. Would you like to call us back as a witness? Nope, yeah. don't call me back, yeah. lose my number. Yeah, just yeah, come yeah. up here. <laughs> I just wonder how much he was gonna tip her. Because uh, I don't know how not enough. Whatever I don't know how much he tip on dead bodies. I feel like it's more than 20%. Yeah, I tip, think so too. I think he's gonna give her the tip of that hammer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, now, she was now, like, nope. now I'm a I'll accessory after the fact. Oh. Corrado, who was released from prison last year, had blood on his clothing when he was arrested. Uh, he was helicoptered to a trauma center. Uh, guess the race of Mr. Anthony Michael Corrado. White. Mm. Karen saying white. I'm thinking probably about 2,000% white. Can't, dad saying white. Let's check the chat room. Ripped from the TV show, The Cleaner, Clorox Wipes White. Not the cleaner. Word. Oh, no. Blanco. Sopranos, Italian white. Word. Bold and white. Um, all right. The correct answer is, and I'm gonna say white. Congratulations. <laughs> Privilege.
For the record, I would have also accepted white passing Latino. Um, oh, yeah. So I think he could have been that as well, but he looks white to me. He looks happy. Yeah. yeah. He looks he look like he just killed somebody. He's cut his mustache. Yeah. Hey, you go. You got some uh, bleach. That's what he look like. He sound like. <laughs> Yeah, y'all know we can, we can count uh, on our hands. How you, how? you got anything to get blood that stains out of carpet? It's just a front desk. Yeah, <laughs> y'all know we can count on our hands how many black people got servants. Uh, uh, a DA clerk, a uh, DA clerk at Massachusetts liquor store tried <laughs> to cash a. Oh, I'm sorry. DA, the district attorney says. Okay. Okay. I was yeah. DA. Clerk at Massachusetts liquor store tried to cash a $3 million lottery ticket left behind by a customer. A 23-year-old liquor store clerk was indicted Friday on charges that she schemed to steal a winning $3 million Mega Millions ticket. Oh, she stole cash it, it from the right person. Like, somebody bought it and won. Well, what yeah. happens is they bring them in. The person takes another ticket and scans it and says, oh, you didn't win. And then sometimes people just throw the ticket away. You know, they don't mm-hmm. want it back. So she held on to the ticket. Figured it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, which is interesting. Yeah, because my thing, I was like, you probably was caught on film, you know, because they recorded oh, yeah, all that yeah. shit. Yeah. Carly Nunez of Lakeville was indicted by a Plymouth grand jury on charges of larceny from a building, attempted larceny, presentation of a false claim, and witness intimidation. Her indictment comes after a four month investigation that involved a thorough review of records, video surveillance, and witness interviews. On January 17th, the victim in this case is said to have entered Savas Liquors on Bedford Street in Lakeville and purchased a bag of barbecue potato chips, two mm. Massachusetts State Quick lottery picks for the Mega Millions lottery, and two for the Mass Cash lottery. They did their research. They was like, somebody find a receipt. Mm-hmm. The man added a multiplier to his Mega Millions to increase the jackpot prize. Nunez, the checkout counter clerk, input the order into the lottery terminal and printed two lottery tickets. Nunez returned to the cash register and rang up the man's order total with $12. Prosecutors say the victim left the store with his bag of chips, but left all his lottery tickets behind the check counter. So maybe he gets it every day. He just forgot. Mm. That, But see, that's the worst person to take it from. Oh, because you know they're coming back. Because Well, they remember their number. Oh, oh the that's right. Yeah. That's right. They remember their numbers. Right? Like, if that's a thing, that's my guess, is if he left Wait. it behind, yeah. he does it enough to forget yeah, a lot of that, them pick the same number. Yeah, that yeah. wasn't a scratch out there. That was a picking a lotto number where you, my mama's birthday. Right. I'm gonna hit it today. That same evening, the victim's identical numbers were announced as winners in the Mega Millions draw, and the victim then briefly searched for his tickets to check his numbers, but concluded they were lost. Two days later, a coworker of survives, 32 year old Manchester, New Hampshire native Joseph Redeem, Redeem, I guess. Uh, Drove Nunez and her boyfriend to Massachusetts Lottery Headquarters. Mm-hmm. Uh, he also was indicted on charge of attempted extortion mm-hmm. in connection with Nunez's scheme. Mm-hmm. When nu- Nunez uh, uh, presented the winning ticket at the lottery quarters, a customer service worker noticed it was torn and burned, but proceeded to scan it and inform Nunez and her boyfriend they won $3 million. Mm-hmm. The couple proceeded to embrace and celebrate. Shortly after cashing the ticket, Prosecutors say Nunez and Redeem were caught on surveillance video arguing in the lobby of the lottery headquarters. An investigation revealed that Nunez allegedly told Redeem she would only pay him $200,000 from the winnings. Mm. The argument... Damn, they couldn't even make it outside the front door. Right. Oh, no. That's how people get caught in this. If people start arguing about... Yeah, we read one, one time where the woman called and was like, well, I'm going to tell you lied about the lottery. That's how they end up know, getting right? busted. That was the episode my mom was on. Yes. <laughs> So it's interesting. A month later, my dad's on the episode where these people got caught lying. Hey, we should find out what number they, they were They were fussing at headquarters. The argument was overheard a uh, couple with the condition <laughs> of the ticket and uh, that was turned in and it made people suspicious. She allegedly claimed she purchased the ticket near the end of her shift on January 17th that she mistakenly ripped the ticket when removing it from her purse and that the burn marks were from placing it on a pipe. I put it on a pipe. Uh, crack pipe. <laughs> Larry officials ultimately told her they were going to have to contact the police to launch an investigation mm-hmm. and she would receive her winnings when the conclusion was made. Yeah, because that's a lot of money just to be giving somebody and y'all, y'all out here uh, uh, fussing two feet in front of us. Now the state police tracked down the victim for an interview and a lot of officials plan to get a victim the 
money for the jackpot because they right. got it on tape when the he bought the real ticket. winner. Yeah. All right. So guess the race of uh, Carly Nunez. Uh, Hispanic. All right. A Latino. Yeah. All right. A let's Latina. check the chat room, see what they believe. I agree. Um, Nunez is a Hispanic name, but I was thinking, you know, you can have a Hispanic name and be your skin color can be black or white, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to go with Latino. Okay. Or Latina, as they say, okay. for a female. Um, yeah, I, there wasn't the kid from Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, isn't his last name Nunez? Uh, okay. Play Malcolm. Mike, uh, what is his name? It's uh, Frankie Munez. So, Frankie Munez. Interesting. Uh, all right, let's check the chat room and see what they believe. Oh, Munez. Uh, she won an all expenses paid, expenses paid three year vacation Latina, arguing in the parking lot in front of authorities, white passing Latinos, Lotto Latino, mm -hmm. uh, Flaming Hot Cheetos Latino, Latinx Latino, Munez, Frankie Munez. Okay. Oh, okay. Munez. Okay. I see Munez, what y'all saying. Yeah. yeah, I said Munez. Thank oh, you. you. But uh, yeah, uh, the correct answer is, and I would have honored both answers here, white or Latino, but I, I think she's white passing Latino. That's her there. Yeah, she's, she, she got that, I'm getting ready to get paid look on her face. <laughs> That's a mug shot, man. That's that's uh, interesting. She's like, damn. And that's the dude that redeemed. That's the dude who drove her there, and then she oh. argued with him, and now he going to gonna get in yeah. trouble. Yeah, that after the fact shit, mm -hmm. child. If I wasn't in the initial, uh, initial crime, I would. I'm not gonna get no mm -hmm. after the fact. No, All right. I'm gonna be like I'm gonna be like that woman. I'm gonna be driving off. Call the nine one one. Tell him to come get your ass. Why? I wonder why she asked him to drive her. I mean, asked her right. to drive him. Oh, right. Yeah. I feel like he must have been in on it. He had to have been. Yeah. Um, all right, let's go to maybe he the only one had a car. Let's go to the bonus oh, round. Yeah, good. Yeah. Uh so far y'all are two for two. Oh wow. Why? I ain't racist. How can I be racist about anybody or anything in my life? How can I? Call them niggas. Just call them niggas. <laughs> It's time to get gold old. Meat, gold chain it's wearing fried chicken and biscuit eating monkey eating baboon big guy fast running high jumping spear chucking 360 degree basketball <laughs> TikTokers walking into strangers' houses are risking their lives for clout in a new challenge. Is this real or is this like the Tide Pods? One person did and all of a sudden it's a phenomenon. It's called the trespassing challenge. Mm. This oh, might it, it, it's breaking the law in in the in the in the task. A group of clout-seeking bozos is being excoriated online after they filmed themselves illegally entering a private property in London for TikTok likes. With many critics daring them to pull the same stunt in the gun-loving U.S. Mm, oh, you plan on getting shot? That's the thing we also should not be proud of. Americans, <laughs> like y'all was using it, like, yeah, why are you try that here? That's not a good thing that, that you can't That's do right. anything without getting shot in America. You, you could have made this any kind of challenge. They could have just been like the trying to go to school challenge, and we'd be like, try doing that in America. Yeah, get your ass <laughs> fucked up, boy. Try go to the theater, right? Yeah. Going to the club challenge. It's great. Like we getting shot. Going to the grocery store challenge. Anyway, a TikTok representative. <laughs> Confirmed to the post that the content was previously removed from the platform and would violate our community guidelines. However, the footage is still blowing up on Reddit and Twitter. In the ludicrous POV clip captioned, walking into random houses, a group of men could be seen brazenly opening a gate, strolling into the front yard of a house, where they then enter the door, which is slightly ajar. Alarmed over the intrusion, the woman follows them inside and tells the owner named James to come to the front door right now. The intruders repeat the owner's name and ask to speak to him, prompting the puzzle man to bound up the stairs towards them. Is this where the study group is? Asked the videographer, fading confusion, whereupon Jane says no and tries to escort them towards the front door. Undaunted, the Hellions boldly enter the living room and plop down on the couch, making themselves at home. Hmm. At this point, Jane's clearly exasperated by the blatant policy violation, tells him he's got kids and directs them out the house. Oh, I thought this was a study group, the cameraman repeats. 
while departing the home. Currently, while TikTok's community guidelines don't address trespasses specifically, they do mention the platform bans, the promotion of criminal activities that may harm people, animals, or property. Uh, meanwhile, of course, it made people shocked and disgusted on social media. One Redditor writing, oh my God, and they had their children there. These guys are absolute bastards. Another said, good way to get killed. Hope someone fucks these kids up, declaring another of the dangerous game. Meanwhile, others dared the gang to try to enter into someone in the U.S.'s uh, house. In Florida, that gets you killed, declared one viewer. Uh, you don't have to go inside in Florida. Just knock on the front door. Right. Pow, pow. Try that in Texas, another said in Twitter repost of the same clip. And my yep. thing is, it doesn't have to be a gun. They could have came down with any form of weapon or anything. Like, y'all literally broke into their home. Mm -hmm. They could have stopped you with a knife. You know, like, it don't have to be a gun. It's like you crossing property. Mm -hmm. And shit like that. And it's one of those things where would this person be wrong for you actually fucking with them? You yeah, know, right. they you know, they got kids and shit. Like like I this know, person right? was cool. You get shot in my like, house. Yeah, it right might have to end up being a <laughs> bro. Right now, you want to do a TikTok challenge and have a funeral? Come to my house. <laughs> walk walk in there Right. People scared. They don't know who yeah. you are. You feminine them. Here's That's the right. audio from the clip. Walk in the random houses. Let's go. They're walking right through the gate. A lady's out there sweeping the sidewalk. Stupid. James? Come to the front door right now, please. James? James? Uh, you mind, son? Hello, James. We need to speak to James. James? Uh, Bloody hell. Uh, uh, James. Is this right, where the study group is? No. Right. No. What the wrong is this? No. Study group. So that's what they sound like. Jolly good show. Um, so guess the race. Oh, everybody in this white. Yeah, I can't see yeah. no brothers. Uh, they would no brother with no better than walking somebody's crib. That pit bull get on your yeah, ass. Yeah, they didn't walk in nobody's black house either. Mm. That would have okay. been a problem. They got racism over there too. James, all right, in it. Uh, Lakita says, I mean, bullet in the ass. That's not a race. Oh, the proud entry sounds like white entitlement to me. Ain't afraid to die white. Colonizers and training white bruvs. Breaking into people's home and the Pokemon told us it's a white shit. Oh no, that's a black London accent, dumb and black. In it, in it, blacks. So now people are saying black. Yeah. Um, the correct answer is because um, I know when James came up the steps, he probably uh, said, "Do you want the smoke, bro?" But the correct <laughs> answer is. And y'all both it. said, well, I both said white. He said, I, you both missed it. I don't want any bloody slaves. Oh, calm down, everybody. I got something to say about that. That's okay. a Clarence Thomas type of black, though. You know what I'm saying? The, you got privilege, you know what I'm saying? Okay, that's the, yeah. that's the kids there. And they thought this shit was funny. That's when they walked in the door. That's, you know, James, the white man. Bloody hey, hell. And ja uh, James would not have been wrong if things would have went sideways. Right? Y'all are in his property, yeah, dog. You got yeah. some time. They downstairs, too. You got some time to load up. Right. He don't know if y'all in there to harm them or anything. Yeah. That's one thing about being young. Just stupid. Like, you like, you're yeah, not right. even considering... That somebody would fuck you up for coming into their property. Somebody's gonna get their their social security. They're not gonna be around that long. Somebody That's also just how much nicer it is over there. Could be, yeah. That they was even. I don't think those black people don't even want to go to the wrong house by accident. By accident, my nigga. Like you can just be like, oh, I thought it was thirteen, seventeen. I, my bad. I'm sorry. And pow, pow, pow. And these motherfuckers in there chilling on this man's couch. Uh, posted up. They ran into the right white guy, man. That's all that is, because the British, yeah. the British were imperialists, man. They took over the whole world, enslaved Indians, and but I guess that's the, I guess you could make an argument that they was, you know, that was a good thing. It's like how y'all like it, because I mean, essentially, that's what they did to these True. other places. They just refused to leave after. Mm -hmm. Was this that episode of Atlanta where the where the, where the black people? reparations? Yes. <laughs> No, nah, I don't think so. But thankfully, nobody was hurt, and hopefully, they yeah, don't do this. That could have went left really quickly. Yeah, I listen to this black podcast with like some dudes from from the UK, 
and they were talking about it. And apparently, this kid in this video, I think, is a rapper of some type. Mm. Short um, career. Yeah. Over here, you get shot. Over there, you get bloody shot. Yeah. He said he was going to stop doing it or something like that. All right. Last thing, <laughs> sword ratchetness. Let's wrap it up. Get it. This is my favorite part. That's what I'm there you go, baby. <laughs> a man carrying a concealed sword uh, uh, inside of an urgent care waiting room faces charges. Damn. Lisa's in the right place. Yeah. Get some help if, quick. If you're going to get stabbed, that's the place to be stabbed, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you're already there. Yeah, they're right. they got, I already got everything you need. Uh, yeah, according to records, upon arrival, officers were met at the entrance by a woman who claimed to be the man's wife. She confirmed her husband had a sword in his possession. The woman also warned officers he had a mental illness. Mm -hmm. I still want, why was a sword around somebody that, that has a mental illness? Why did y'all have that in the house? By entering the waiting room, CSPD officers noticed the man sitting with an unknown object on his lap concealed with a green cloth. Um... He, they approached him. He proceeded to uncover and reveal a sword. Subsequently, the officers instructed him to place the sword on the floor, return to his seat, to which he complied. With the sword secured on the waiting room floor, the arrest report <clears> indicates <throat> CSPD officers took possession of it uh, to identify it correctly, unwrapping it from the cloth and confirming that it was a two foot bladed sword with indiscernible symbols on the blade's bottom portion. After the discovery, the man was arrested and transported to police headquarters for booking procedures. <clears throat> During his interview at the police station, he stated he had purchased a sword from a pawn shop. Oh no! Just that's see, a pawn that's shop. That's what I'm saying. You like we have more rules. We have too many guns, but we have more rules on buying guns and swords. Uh, just two days prior, uh, he had not bought the sword out in public until that day. He went on to tell officers he didn't want to leave his sword in his vehicle due to the fear that someone would steal it, mm. and that he did not have any intention of harming others with the sword. And he was unaware of the of the illegality of bringing it into the healthcare facility. That's what he's meant to do. Don't it says yeah. no weapons? I'm assuming that includes swords too. Yeah, just because they only have a picture of a gun, it's not <laughs> limited to a gun. I would never assume a sword is just a take anywhere type of thing. Right, man. Like, oh, I'm going to the movies, hand me my sword. It's like know? if you got a pet rhinoceros, you want to walk in the <laughs> right. Wendy's or something. With you. Right. It's okay. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Bridget asked the last question um, for my dad. How do you feel having a granddaughter graduate from high school? I tell you what, we spent a lot of time with her, nurturing her. It was, she was almost like our child, certainly our grand, granddaughter, you know. So it was such a blessing and such a relief at the same time. I called her yesterday and she said she was asleep. So I know she's uh, probably feeling the same way I am, relieved and relaxed and chilling. And I want to, first of all, I want to thank everybody who contributed to her, uh, her success in getting through school. A lot of people supported her both emotionally, physically, picked her up, took her places, spent time with her, including you two and her dad, you know. And um, so, you know, it's a blessing to have everybody involved to see a child reach this one milestone and prepare to go to the next one. So that's Dope. how I feel. Um, thank you, uh, everybody who asked questions. Thank you to the chat room showing up. Uh, happy Father's Day once again, Dad. Thank you. Glad so you much. enjoyed uh, Earthquake and the other Absolutely. dudes. Um, and I know you probably going. What you what you doing after this? Fishing or working or what? You know, your uh, uncle called me and said something about going fishing, but I'm gonna go back talk to your mom and you know see what she wants to do. She might want to go out to eat or something. Okay. You know what I like about, let's say this last thing, mm -hmm. your mom works some, you know, bizarre hours. She starts work, at, works from home. She starts work, at, she gets up at five after four, starts work at 4.30, and She'd by early. one o'clock, she's off work. But that's a long day, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and she's kind of sitting. So about one o'clock, 1.30, um, she takes a nap. So I'll take a little nap, too. You know, I've kind of gotten in the habit. And then about seven o'clock, if it ain't happening, yeah, they gonna happen at our house because she get ready to crash. Out. <laughs> yeah, because you so, got yeah, because that, that time yeah. comes really quick. I get plenty of sleep now, so you know. 
Yeah, that's I gotta see what she's up to. Well, you have a great uh, rest of your okay. I'm sorry. I was about to say, how does it uh feel being retired? Like how you I'm going to know how you adjust into that. Well, you know, I've always been a busy person, kind of like you two. I'm always I got always got stuff going on. And um people always people think that I just like, you know, uh work in the garden or something like that. And I do all of that stuff. I still have a part-time business where I do stuff for other people. And so I have stuff to do. At, I used to do some work every day mm -hmm. uh, up until maybe about two months ago. Then I started uh, cutting back to about three Good. days a week, you know. So, Slow it down. Enjoy life. I am. I'm enjoying it, you know. I truly enjoy it. And how do you feel about Duke's chances next season? Uh, we're going to be probably preseason number one, you know, and we'll probably uh, bring back Coach K uh, <laughs> for a little uh, uh, advisory role. I, I don't know. We look we look pretty good, you know. Um, you know, they recruit well. I, what's his name is a good recruiter, so we'll, you know, we'll see. We'll All see. right. I think Carolina's going to be ranked number. You I don't know, know if we're going to be ranked in coming the top, to the season. Well, even in the top 50. That's what I was going to say. The top. Maybe. I don't know. Hubert, Hubert, uh, kind of, kind of let us down yeah. last season. Yeah, but uh, well, you couldn't control all that other shit that was happening. That's true. Yeah. Well, he, uh, it didn't bother me because honestly, once we did, we did the Duke. I didn't yeah, care. I know, right? It, no, your, that, stand, your standards are so low. That'll last him for years. Your honestly. standards are so low. I mean, if you're the greatest school, I feel like that's saying oh, the standards are high. Man. So I'm, we beat the greatest coach of all yeah, time yeah, the in the last game that he'll ever play. Don't forget to mention Michael Jordan. Jordan. Jay's worthy. He Jay probably like, they all them guys too. Yeah. He probably still he probably still get an attitude with his wife yeah, every he day. Probably he, probably he probably still mad about that thing, and I'm glad. Uh, all right, child, we'll talk to you soon.